Good evening, Sharon and Carol. How are you? So, Carol, you uh, you thought my little uh, discussion about my friend was funny and showed it to Jeff. Thanks a lot, you know. Friends like you. Okay, my comments are very slow tonight, so, so what else is new? <sighs> Not my most resilient tonight. It's been a long day. Here we go again. No oh, candy. Hello, Critch. How are you, my friend? Let's see if I can get it to focus. Anybody got any idea what that is? I think it's a microphone holder. I think it goes with this little microphone gizmo. I never have been able to get this microphone gizmo to work. I'll end up playing with this and screw it up. Yep, I think these go together. Mm. Okay, wasn't that exciting? I promise the show will be at least that exciting. How's everybody's wonderful Friday evening today? <clears throat> Does look like a rabbit's foot. Very small rabbit. Very small earmuffs. Very small nose warmer. That would be enough of that. <laughs> I'm watching myself over here. I'm not really funny. <laughs> Cooking deer steaks? Oh, I'm jealous. It's quiet? Oh, yeah, it probably is quiet. That better? Thank you, Sharon. So I come on early to get all this stuff fixed. Oh, I forgot to add. Ah, the Zig Man shows up. It's always more fun when Ziggy's in the house. <laughs> well, I made it a little louder anyway. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. <laughs> all right, Facebook, YouTube, and all the world. They were day here. I thought I'd, instead of telling you what the weather is, I would just put it up. So earlier today, I posted on whether or not my hair would be good. And uh, I knew it was going to be OK, because it's always good when there's high humidity. This is about as good as it gets. So if Denise, if you're out there, you can have yourself a drink. So tonight, well, we've already discussed my hair. I'm going to talk about the waterfall behind Deadwood. <clears throat> We're going to talk a bit about resilience because, <laughs> yeah, I don't know about you, but I've really been challenged on the resilience side. And I'll show you a video of uh, me printing a Teton print <clears throat> for one of Belinda's co-workers. So what do you say we get right to it? This is all in a day's work. I do these every Friday and Tuesdays, I do them Friday at 6.30 p.m. I do them Tuesdays at 9.30 a.m. It's going to be another quick one this Thursday because I also have to work. So here we go. So these beautiful pictures I posted on Deadwood Falls um, on, on, on uh, Facebook. So, um, Candy, I'll talk about the book at the end. Um, 
excuse me. So this is a natural fall. I think it's natural. Actually, it might be man-made because uh, it runs straight into the slough of this big, big old mine in Deadwood. It's just beautiful. I love the way the rocks are. Good, solid granite. Um, had lots of flow that day we were up there. I was there with my friend Scott Marchant. Get my picture here. I got up there with my friend Scott Marchant, the author of all the Hiking Idaho books. In fact, he just started, just put one out lately It's called Hiking Boise. Um, if you're a hiker and you want to get out and be out and about, it's a perfect book for that. I'm really, really happy for him about how it turned out. So, as all of you know, um, I'm working on a book called Idaho Waterways, and uh, this is the Deadwood River. And you wouldn't think about it, but the Deadwood, where do you think it flows into? It actually flows into the salmon. The salmon is a fascinating river. I didn't know much about it, but um, I knew it went by, by, uh, by Stanley, and I wasn't really thinking about the fact that it also uh, goes by Riggins. You think about how far Riggins and Stanley are, and then it goes up, it goes clear up into the... Uh, uh, back country of Idaho and down in and enters the snake. So it's fascinating. I'm having such a good time learning about all of this stuff. Uh, the book is probably it's probably 80% written and maybe 60 or 70% shot. Um, right now I'm having a hard time finding a printer who will print it for less than 20 bucks. As you guys know, I would like to sell it for 40 or 50, so I've got to get that price down. Um, if anybody, any of you out there have a contact with a printer, please, please, please let me know. Well, I don't know about you folks, but <clears throat> these are challenging times. Uh, as you know, I've had a bit of illness. Um, I have been challenged on the resilient side. So I ask my friends, my families, my Facebook cadre to uh, tell me what they do about <clears throat> resilience. So let's talk about that. So what is resilience? Uh, resilience is the capacity re to recover quickly from difficulties. It's defined as toughness. Um, <clears throat> Uh, the dictionary says, uh, says that. Uh, um, popular, popular psychology says resilient people are able to utilize their skills and strengths to cope and recover from problems and challenges. I really do feel like this little, he looks like a potato, the little potato guy with the dragon at him. Uh, even his, his pompadour is, whatever you call it, the thing on the top of his helmet has been singed. But he's handling it. He's fighting away that flame from that dragon, that dragon of adversity. <clears throat> so I ask you all, <laughs> and I got some hilarious responses. <laughs> I so, so appreciate it. Uh, my friend Marianne said that you need to keep a sense of humor and have a quick, and have a thick skin. So how do you build resilience? What do you do? How do you, uh, how do you become more resilient? Well, let's talk a little bit about that. <clears throat> resilience is how well you deal with and bounce back. That's just the basis, because we're all going to have challenges. Um, you know, we've had COVID problems. Uh, I'm used to doing 30 shows, 30 to 35 shows. I did three last year. Uh, my savings are dwindling. <clears throat> I, did get, I did apply for a PPP loan. I hope I get that, but it's been hard. Um, uh, you know, uh, it's been hard to work. It's been really hard for me to think hard. So, <clears throat> what are the what's the best what are the best things to do to be be more resilient? One, <laughs> uh, Zig says, wake up, wake up in the morning and see what happens. So, to be resilient, you need a sense of purpose. I'm lucky. I decided uh, just before this whole COVID thing just was going to go on that I was going to write a book. <clears throat> Now, COVID meant that I had to write a different book, but I turned it around. So I've been working daily on this book, and it's really been good for me. Have a sense of purpose. Here's the, here's the key. Believe in your own abilities. Doesn't matter how far they knock you down, but if you have that deep internal sense of yourself, well, then you can power through it because you know in the long run your skills will move you through. <laughs> Apply for unemployment. It's not on this list, but it's a pretty good one. Be optimistic and positive. <clears throat> Joe Freiberger, my uh, former boss and great friend, she says, you need to find the positive in any situation. Boy, is that great advice, because there's usually something positive. No matter how far you get beaten down, 
you can naturally find something. You probably learn something, even if it's just to avoid the situation which got you beat up. <clears throat> Be kind to yourself and to others. Our friend B, B says, feed the self that you want to be. Um, there's an old saying, there's a good wolf and a bad wolf, feed the good wolf. Uh, uh, Laura Wilson says, exercise and A-train. Aaron Nolene says, meditation. All of those are really important. Be good to yourself. I walk daily. I walk daily even when I'm having trouble walking. I walk in the rain. Uh, Dasher Dog and I went out first morning. I don't walk very far, maybe a half a mile. Um, out maybe 10, 15 minutes, but it gets my bump pumping. It gets me going. So be kind to, your, be kind to yourself. Develop some problem-solving skills. <clears throat> okay, I'm an old dog, but I can still learn. I can still find ways like this, like looking at resilience and seeing, is there something I can do to be better at, uh, at, <clears throat> at solving the problems? I've been learning a program called InDesign, and for those of you who are out there uh, who are photographers, um, imagine Photoshop, but with words. My favorite thing, words. I'm so, so very good at words. <clears throat> yeah, not necessarily the best thing for me, but I'm learning it. Um, it's a great thing to know. I had to do it because I had to design the book because I need to design it. So if, if, if no other way, then I'm able to hand it off to a real book person. And, uh, <laughs> you know, that's, that's what I need to do. So take action. Do something. Even if it's wrong, do something. And because done is better than perfect. If you're in that wallow and you're just beat up and you're that little guy holding the sword up, <clears throat> do something. Take action. Go forward. Be positive. Really, 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 really important to just do something, as I said, even if it's wrong, because done is better than perfect. It's okay to ask for help. <clears throat> And I mean in a mental illness, a mental uh, state circumstance, but I also mean it's okay to ask your friends for help. I will be honest, I am not very good at asking for help. <clears throat> this show has helped me because I know that I have a whole group of friends, uh, some family, some great friends, uh, some people that are, that are truly with me, and uh, <clears throat> it helps me a lot. Uh, this show has been amazing for my mental health. I'm not sure I would have been uh, able to be as successful and has moved as well as I have. Simply waiting for the problem to go away, it's not a bad thing to do. Focus on your progress. Focus on what you are doing, how far you are going ahead, not how far you are behind. Like I said, I'm 60% of the book. That means I got 40% to go, but I'm not focusing on that 40%. I'm focusing on what I've got done. Really help. Be positive, watch your words, think about what you're saying to yourself. I say that a lot because it's one of my basic tenets. Actively work on solutions. Learn something new. It says up here, that's great advice. Learn to do something different. <clears throat> um, even if you're an old dog, you can learn a new trick. And several of you, including my friend uh, Patricia Dowdle, Patricia Dowdle Jones, um, her brother makes the puzzles that you see at, at Costco. I got I got one and I gave one this year. <coughs> Teresa, um, not Teresa, but Patricia, we used to call her gay. She didn't like that so she changed it to Patricia. Anyway, so Patricia says, take deep breaths. And so does Kat, uh, Jackie, uh, one of the most wonderful people in the world. Take a, take a deep breath and think of all that you have to be thankful for. How wonderful is that? <laughs> And now, for those of you who are a bit funnier, my good friend Carol, <clears throat> who may very well still be watching, I can't be sure, but she says, put your big panties on and just do what you need to do. That's really pretty good advice. Uh, old friend Michael Barswinsky, who did this remodel that's wrapped around me here, says, Metamucial every morning. So I will post a link to this uh, <clears throat> to this original post for those of you who don't know about it. Uh, I'll put it in the comments here and you can see that. But please, please, please stay resilient. And one of the most important there is you can ask for help. If you get to that point where the world is beating you down, call me, call a friend, check it out. 
call a therapist, <clears throat> but don't let, don't, let, don't let the bastards get you down. All right, my friends. I'm going to switch to a video. Before that, I want to talk a little bit about Tuesday. I've got an interesting show. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm going to pop this over here. Come on. Come on. You can do it, computer. Okay, it's not going to let me add it for a minute. Why not? Come on. I want to add it to the broadcast. Fine. Carol, for some reason, it won't let me add it to the broadcast. But if you'll notice in the comments, Carol says that it wasn't, wasn't a joke that she really does tell, tell herself that. <laughs> Good advice to yourself and to others, my friend Carol. So I want to talk a little bit about Tuesdays before I show the video. Um, on Tuesday, I found a Robo Robert Cop 2, which I'm going to post, which will be fun. And I'll give you an update on my friend request from Sophia. So join me. Tuesday morning at 9.30. I've already got a pretty good show lined up. So, I got into the studio over the last couple of days and I was actually able to print something. It's due on Monday. It's going to be finished. It's a big, beautiful print. And I videoed it. And I thought maybe you would like to see how that went. So, let's give this a shot. <laughs> Gives you a good idea how big that printer is. It's a pretty hands-on, uh, hands-on thing. I pretty much have to just sit and watch that printer work because if I don't, it screws itself up. And there it is, all printed. Hasn't been coated yet. Let's coat it. No, really? Okay, there we go. Here it is after the coating is on. Well, there you go, my friends. This is David R. Day. You want more information about me? Check it out right there, davidrday.com. I appreciate you all. I will be back next Wednesday. Um, if you'd like information on the size and pricing of that print, I would be more than glad to make you one of that or anything like that. So this is what we do. We do it Fridays and Tuesdays. Please join me next Tuesday. I would really appreciate it. I greatly, as I often say, appreciate how fun it is to have you with me on these Friday evenings. I was not feeling very good before the show, and I feel much, much, much better. It's great to have friends. I appreciate you all. I'm out.